This morning, amen, hallelujah, God gave me another revelation during the week. And so I want to add a point right here because I just can't pass up, amen, this thing that I saw in the scripture. And so we're going to add a point number three, hallelujah. And uh, point, the point that we're going to talk about this morning was uh, Peter was sleeping. Somebody say Peter was sleeping. Just couldn't pass that up, Ronnie P. Just couldn't pass that up. Amen. And so we'll talk about that this morning, and hopefully next time we'll talk about the angel of the Lord and then the voice of a God. Amen. But let's begin with this new third point. Amen. This, this revelation God gave me during the week about Peter sleeping. And it's coming from verse 6, and it says, And when Herod would have brought him forward, but about to bring Peter out, the same night Peter was sleeping. Between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keep was before the door that kept the prison. All right? So in this text, y'all, we just can't pass up the fact that Peter was sleeping. And Peter was not only sleeping as we look at it, Peter was sleeping good. All right? He was sleeping good. He was sleeping so good they, they had trouble waking him up. All right? As we look at how good Peter was sleeping, verse 7 tells us all that the angel had to do to wake Peter up, all right? And that's how we know he was sleeping good. In verse 7, it says, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Now, if Peter was sleeping light, he would have woke up just with that. Because, you know, some of y'all, y'all sleep light, and when somebody just come in the room, you could feel some change. Who in here? Who in here? You understand what I'm saying? All right? But the angel came in the room, and it wasn't just a person. It was an angel came in the room, and Peter still slept through that. Hallelujah. In the Greek, amen, contextual uh, relationship in, in verse 7, in the Greek, it said that the angel not only came in the room, but the Greek means that, hallelujah, the angel came in the room and stood over him. All right? And so those that sleep light, you can feel when somebody come in the room, but you can also feel when somebody come by your bedside. And you wake up, what you doing, what you doing, what you doing? I'm sleeping, I'm getting my, I'm getting my slippers, I'm getting my shoes. You know what I'm saying, I'm sleeping. So the angel was in the room, the angel was standing right over him, amen. But not only that, watch this in verse 7, and a light shined in the prison. The angel turned on the light. All right, but it wasn't any kind of light, but it was the Shekinah light. It was the glory that lit up the room. Anybody hear me up in here? Now, some of y'all sleep, amen, and, and uh, when somebody come in the room, that wouldn't wake you up. When somebody stand over you, that won't wake you up. You're a hard sleeper like Peter. Amen. I know some specifically, amen. Hallelujah. First lady, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> sleep ball, sleep ball. Hallelujah. But, but we're going to get to it. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. All right, Bible say he giving his beloved sleep. Anybody hear me up in here? All right, I'm one of the ones that sleep light. Amen, but it don't mean I don't get my Z's. But listen, let's get to it, unless I digress. So the angel turned on the light. Now, some of y'all, y'all sleep, amen, but, but it's got to be dark when you sleep. Amen, if they got any light in the room. You understand what I'm saying? A little toy with a little light on it on the inside. Where that, where that light come from? Turn off that light. All right. So the angel walk in the room. He's standing over Peter and he turned on a light and not just a night light. He turned on Shekinah. He turned on the glory, lit up the whole cell. Amen. Probably coming out the windows. Amen. Amen. And guess what? Peter was still sleeping. He didn't wake up. Not only that. Amen. After the angel turned on the light, he looked at Peter. Peter's still sleeping. He said, well, I'm going to have to do this the old fashioned way. He walked up to Peter, Peter sleeping, and he smote him on the side. TP, I don't know if he bent down, if he hit him with something, had a staff, or if he just went and just kicked Peter. Get up, man. All right? All right? But watch this. I looked at the text closely, and after they hit Peter, after they kicked him, after they smote him, poked him, prodded him, in my interpretation, Peter still... Didn't wake up, but he slept through it. And that's not odd, because they got some in here. You could shake them. And they still go, it might just break the snore. That they <laughs> Turn around. You still get, how many people know people like that? Amen. Hallelujah. All of you raise your hand fast. Amen. Hallelujah. So they poke Peter. You say, Pastor, how you know 
that they poked Peter and he still was sleeping. Well, because after they poked him, after they smote him, the angel went another level. You see, after he kicked Peter, all right, he stood, he would come in the room, Peter's still asleep. Stood over Peter, Peter's still sleeping, amen. Turn the light on, Peter's still asleep. Kick Peter, Peter's still sleeping. He said, oh, man, I guess I got to put my hands on Peter. Bible says in that verse, what else he did? He raised Peter up. Picked the man up. All right? Now, angels are strong, so I don't know if he pick him up, his feet hanging off the ground. All right? Just pick him up. Amen? And at that moment, I think that Peter started to rouse himself. Just look, you can get up and look at Looking at the angel. All right? But how many people know you could be standing up? Hey! You could be standing up. Me moving around the house. Look. But really, you still what? Pastor, how you could tell that? Well, if you look at verse 9. All right? Peter thought he, Peter was still, Peter, Peter was still sleeping. Verse 9, and he went out. He walked behind the angel and followed him. Watch this. And knew not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a what? He thought he was dreaming. It's not until verse 11, y'all, that Peter really wake up. In verse 11, and when Peter was come to himself, he was finally up, y'all. Now, he done, now look, he, he in the city now. They done delivered him, walked him all through Angola. <laughs> he in downtown Lafayette. Oh. What I'm trying to show you that Peter was sleeping, y'all. And he was really sleeping. All right? And I began to ask the question, why was Peter's sleep so good? Especially in a day, amen, when so many people can't sleep today. Why was Peter's sleep so good? You see, when good sleep eludes so many. I looked it up in the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. Say that each night, not, not 50, not 100, not 1,000, but millions of Americans struggle to fall asleep and stay asleep. Millions. The Consumer Report Survey says 27% of people in our country have tr trouble falling asleep and staying asleep. In fact, hallelujah is such a problem that it's a lucrative business. And if you're in the sleep business today, you're going to make some money. Anybody hear me up in here? Hallelujah. It, it, it bewildered me when sleep centers began to pop up all over the place. And, and you ask some people what they do. Well, I'm a, I'm a sleep specialist. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I'm saying to myself, they just need to get with first lady because first lady can you know how to. <laughs> but she'll just laugh because, you see, now I fall asleep faster than her. All right, but once she go to sleep, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How many people fall asleep fast? How many people stay sleeping? My boy, you raise your hand for both of them. <laughs> That's a spiritual gift, boy. <laughs> but watch this. It's estimated that Americans spend $41 billion dollars on trying to get to sleep through sleep centers, through drugs, sleep drugs. You know, you got Ambien, Somonex, Valiums, nightcaps with alcohol, you see, and God knows what else. By 2020, it's estimated that the sleep industry going to make $52 billion in America alone. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm in the wrong business. All right. All right. I'm about to help you save your money in here this morning. I'm about to put you to sleep, and I hope not through the sermon you're sleeping in church. I hope it's not that anointed that you fall asleep now, but I'm talking about tonight, you know what I'm saying? Right? Look at your neighbor and say, get ready to sleep. Get ready to sleep. All right? Now watch this, Brian. People can't sleep 
today, and they're sleeping in houses. They're sleeping in beds. They're sleeping with covers and pillars. They're sleeping not with a window open, but, but, but air conditioned, central air. Hey Amen. Get too hot, you just turn the dial and it's nice and cold. Get too cold, just turn it up and it's nice and hot. And they, they can't sleep in America where we have the most luxury that a people on the planet has ever had in the history of mankind, and they can't sleep. Anybody hear me up in here? Now watch Peter. Peter is sleeping like we just mentioned, not in a house, but in a prison cell. Not in a bed, but on the floor. Not with a pillar, but with two chains on his arms. Anybody hear me up in here? He's not in air conditioned, amen. In fact, he got two guards right in his personal space. All right? And he's sleeping on death row. And in the very next morning, he's scheduled to die. Are you catching the revelation here? Look at your neighbor and say, Peter was sleeping. With all of that going on. And here we can't sleep and none of that's going on. Are you with me here so far? I couldn't pass it up, Deacon. I couldn't. All right? In Psalm 127 and 2, listen, I quoted it for you earlier. But watch this. It's God that gives sleep, y'all. He gives sleep. And he gives a promise. He says, in Psalm 127, 2, it says, For he giveth his beloved sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all should have that up there. But if not, just, just look. One, Psalm 127, 2. Write it down if you're having problems because it's a promise that God gave you. It's a promise he's given you. For he's given his beloved, the people he loved. What is he giving them? Sleep. All right? In fact, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It shouldn't matter. All right? Peter slept in a prison cell and Jesus slept in a storm in the bow of a ship, in the bow of a boat, where the winds and the waves tossing the boat, amen, the disciples all worried, thinking they're going to die, and where was Jesus? Sleeping in the boat. I don't know what's rocking your boat this morning, but it shouldn't be stealing your sleep. Come on, give y'all some glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Matthew 8, 24. Write that down. That's, what, that's another scripture you're going to need. All right. And so, hallelujah, we like Peter and Jesus can sleep in adverse conditions. Amen. I'm going to give you four things you need, four reasons, four prescriptions to good sleep. You can stop the prescription pills. You can stop the over-the-counter, under-the-counter, around-the-counter, the brown bag, paper bag. Amen. Sleep solutions that you're trying to have. Amen. Four things that's going to get you good sleep. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, with this being said, all right, and I, I got to use this as a caveat, all right, I'm going to give you the spiritual solutions to spiritual problems that's keeping you from sleeping. I'm not a doctor, so you still might have some physical things that's keeping you from sleep that you're going to have to get resolved. But sometimes when you resolve the spiritual ones, the physical ones follow. Come on, give y'all some glory, amen? All right, here we go. How could Peter sleep so well? Number one, his soul was saved. His soul was saved. Come on now, we're going right at it, Brother Carl. His soul was saved. You see, Peter was saved. He could sleep well because he knew where his soul was going. Listen, when you're saved, it's a comfort that you have. You ain't got to dream about hell, and if the devil put a hell dream on you, you just wake up and say, devil, I'm not going there. That place is for you. Come on, give y'all some glory. He knew where he was going if something had to happen. That's how he could sleep in that cell. That's how he could sleep even though he was scheduled to die the next morning. Peter didn't care. You see, for Peter to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. And one of my favorite scriptures coming out of 2 Timothy 1 and 12, it says this, For the which cause I also suffer, Paul says, nevertheless I'm not ashamed. He says, For I know whom I have believed. And Paul is saying, I believed in God. I know whom 
I believe. That's God he's talking about. And watch this. And am persuaded. Paul says, I'm confident that he is able to keep that. God has the power to keep that which I have committed unto him. Well, what did Paul commit unto God? His soul, y'all. He's committed his soul to God. He, he's saved. He's given his life to Christ. And Paul is saying, for I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Come on, give y'all some glory, all right? And the day he's talking about is his day of passing. The day he's talking about is that judgment day. And he knows God. He's persuaded and confident in God that nothing can happen to his soul because God has got his soul in his hand. Come on, give y'all some glory, amen? You see, if you're saved, you ain't got no fear of death. If you're saved, you can go to sleep and go to sleep well because you know where you're going if something happened. Peter was like, God's got this. God, God has got this. If I die, I'm going to just be with him. You see? You see, you could sleep good in a storm, in danger, in a hurricane, in a cell, in a prison. Amen. If you know, hallelujah, who holds your tomorrow. Come on, give him some glory, amen. If you're here and you can't sleep, one of your reasons is, amen, maybe your soul is not in the hands of your maker. Maybe you're not confident, hallelujah, that if something happened over the night, you're not confident where you're going to be. You're like the rich man who got everything else together, building all kind of barns, amen. You got all your estate, all your house in order, but you don't have your soul in order. And the Bible says, thou fool, this night will thou life, thy soul be required of you. If he had to come get you tonight, do you know where you're going? You see, you could know. If you close on the deal with God today while you're here in this church while the blood is still running warm through your veins. Anybody hear me up in here? Be saved is what I'm saying. Pastor, how do I get good sleep? How do I make sure that I'm saved? Admit to God that you're a sinner. All right? And I'm not singling you out. We all sinners. They had two men in jail. Amen. And one of them was in jail for stealing something. The other one was in jail for killing somebody. And the one that was a thief looked at the murderer and said, well, at least I never did what you did. Because we judge each other, you know. We try to make our one feel worse or better than the other. And he said, well, at least I'm not in your situation. You killed a man. But the murderer looked at him and laughed. He said, yeah, but we both in jail. <laughs> I might not have done what you did. You might not have done what she did, but we all sinners in need of a savior. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? So we admit that we sent us to God, and then we believe. We believe his promise. We believe that Jesus came and died for our sins on that cross. He really died, and he really gave up the ghost. He really was buried in the grave, and he really rose on the third day. And we got some people that have trouble believing that. Could a man rise from the grave? Oh, yeah. If God be for you, who could be against you? Anybody hear me up in here? <laughs> Hallelujah. If God wanted Jesus to rise from the grave, couldn't God make Jesus rise from the grave? Oh, yeah. Don't you put a limit on God. Don't you let the devil test your faith. For nothing is impossible for our God. Hallelujah. Like he asked Sarah, I asked you this morning, is anything too hard for God? Huh? Hallelujah. And so you admit you're a sinner. You believe in Yahshua, Jesus as your Savior. Amen. And then you call upon him. For the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to call upon him before you leave this place this morning. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. <laughs> That's the gospel. Another element of this is, is that, hallelujah, Sometimes our past sins can keep us from sleeping. Amen. Sometimes we stay up at night thinking about the things we used to do or that thing that we did. Amen. And it'll keep us up at night. You see, once you're saved, amen, salvation can give you sleep, not just based on the fact that you know where you're going. Amen. 
But it gives you sleep because you know what you've done is under the blood. You ain't got to worry about those past sins no more. The Bible tells us that through the cross, amen, and through the blood of Jesus, amen, that he forgives our sins. And he separates us from our sins as far as the east is from the west. He takes all that we did, even the worst things, even the worst things, even the most atrocious things that you can't forget. The Bible says he's forgotten them. He's thrown them into the sea of forgetfulness. Come on, give y'all some glory. Amen. So when you say, amen, the scripture in Romans 8, 1 applies. Therefore, there is no condemnation, no judgment, no guilt, no beating yourself up anymore for those in Christ Jesus. So when you're saved, you're going to get your rest. Because where you're going, hallelujah, don't bother you. And where you come from, don't bother you anymore either. Come on, give y'all some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, it's important even after salvation for you to keep a daily regimen of repentance. Amen. And if you're not a repentant believer, you better start. Amen. Because even though we save, y'all, we still make mistakes. And every day while you're on this planet, you got to go back to Father God and tell Father God, God, hallelujah, I'm striving for righteousness. Hey, God, but I always don't get what I'm striving for every single day. So, Lord, forgive me of known and unknown sin. Forgive me of sins in my mind and sins in my heart and sins in my hands and sins in my feet. And every day you got to renew that relationship with him and keep it right. And if you do that, friend, from a spiritual perspective, you're going to sleep like a baby. You're going to sleep like Peter. Come on, give y'all some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You always got to say that you're sorry. Point number two, hallelujah. Peter rested because his soul, amen, was not only saved, but his soul was in the peace of God. His soul was in the peace of God. Peter was sleeping like that and couldn't be woke up in the cell. In the prison, hallelujah, that row, scheduled to die, hallelujah, because he wasn't worried about a thing. Peter wasn't worried. You see, when you get Christ, you not only get salvation, but Christ deals with the stresses of everyday life as well. Hey, God, he gives us a peace. Somebody say peace. peace. All right. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he gives us this promise. He says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All right? Peace and rest comes from Jesus. Listen to me. In John 14, 27, Jesus says it like this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be what? Be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. When you get saved, amen, not only does he give you salvation, meaning you ain't got to worry about where you're going, but you don't have to worry about, amen, what's around you and what's going on, the stresses of life. You ain't got to worry about that because you've got the peace of God. Anybody hear me up in here? Look at your neighbor and say, peace be unto you. you. See? See, that was a, that was a wealthy man once, y'all, amen, and he was so rich. And he had one son that was his only legacy, his only heir. And him and that son used to travel around the world just buying art and artifacts, amen, and things that were very expensive. And he loved his son so much. It was all he had left. Well, his son, amen, war broke out and his son went off to battle, went to war, amen. And the daddy didn't want him to go in the first place. And lo and behold, while the son was at war, amen, the son died, okay? And a soldier came with the news, hallelujah, because the son was just, he was great, even in the military. Soldier came with the news at the daddy's door, telling him the news. Look, your son is gone. He passed away in battle, amen, fighting for his country and the people that we love. He said, but I want to give you this. And he gave to the daddy a painting, amen. And it wasn't a Rembrandt, it wasn't a Van Gogh, it wasn't a Picasso, amen. It was a painting done by the soldier himself. And he, he had loved the, the, the wealthy man's son. And one night, the wealthy man's son was standing guard and the, and the soldier painted, amen, the wealthy man.
son. And, and so he brings it to the wealthy man. He says, it's not all that, amen, but it's a portrait. It's the last portrait of your son, all right? The wealthy man took that portrait, and he cherished it. And he hung it up with one of, some of the most expensive paintings that he had. A day came when the wealthy man died as well. And there was nobody to give the estate to, so he had an auction. At the auction, he was selling all of his stuff at a discounted rate. People flew in from all over to come to this auction. The first item on the auction was the picture of his son. And all the expert art collectors, TP, they look at that picture and <laughs> say, that ain't nothing. We don't want that. Bring up the other stuff. They go on through the prices, $1,000, nobody bidding. $500, nobody bidding. $100, nobody bidding. $50, nobody bidding. Finally, somebody buys it just to, let's move on. We just going to buy it. Amen. Maybe I can put it in a storage somewhere. And so somebody buys it for a nominal fee. They buy the portrait of the man's son. The auctioneer closed the book. He said, the auction is over. We can go home. They say, wait, 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 wait. What about the Picassos and the Van Goghs and the Rembrandts? What about all of the sculptures and everything? He says, I have the will right here. And anyone who has the son. <laughs> woo! Anyone who has the son has everything that the father has built and offered and owns. Anybody hear me up in here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the one who had the son owned everything. Listen, that's the promise of heaven to you. See, if you've got the son, you've got the father. And if you've got the father, you've got everything that the father brings. You see, people want the blessings of life. They want the peace I'm talking about now. They want the joy that I'm talking about, that Brian them sung about. They want the abundant life. They want the riches. Amen. They want all the blessings of the Father. They want all the blessings of Yah. But you could never have the blessings of the Father until you get your hands on the portrait of the Son. Hey, come on, give Yah some glory in this house. Hallelujah. You see, once you have Yahshua, a whole package comes with it. And part of that package is peace. That's why Jesus said, he said, peace I give unto you. It's not the peace like of the world. No, it's a peace, hallelujah, that passes understanding. It's a peace where waves and weather and everything is around you and you can sleep in the boat. It's a peace where you on death road and you on a hard concrete floor and you can sleep in a cell. How was Peter sleeping? Peter was in the peace of God. You see? Now, as believers, we've been given this peace, but not all the time we rest in that peace. Sometimes we move out that peace. Sometimes that peace is not always activated in our lives. And anytime you feel a little stress, anytime you feel a little trouble, a little anxiety, it's a sign that God is showing you, you moved out of my peace. You get, get back into the peace. Get back into the peace. See, when you're worried about money, you're out of the peace. When you're worried about your children, you're out of the peace. When you're worried about the job, your future, amen, where something's going to come from, you, you, you're out of the peace. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, get back in the peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, Pastor, how do I get back in the peace? Take your mind off of you and put it on him. Put it on him. You see, Peter could sleep because he wasn't worried about himself. He, was, he had his mind on the Lord. Watch this, watch this. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. See, this is not just words of a literature book. These are promises from the Most High God. Things you should put on your wall. Things you should put on, hallelujah, uh, your screensaver. Because listen here, God has promised you this. If you do what God say, listen, you're going to sleep like a baby. You're going to have peace that passes understanding. 
Not only do you keep your mind on him and you activate that peace, hey, God, don't worry, amen, but pray. Oh, God, have mercy. When you start praying about your situation, you could go ahead and stop worrying, amen? Anybody hear me up in here? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you, why worry when you're giving it to God? Let God worry about that. All right, and I tell you, God ain't going to worry about a thing. Because he owned a cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. No doubt Peter prayed in that cell. In fact, amen, the church was praying for him while he was in that cell. And Philippians 4, 6 gives us the promise when we pray. The Bible says be careful. And in the Greek it says be anxious. You know how many people struggling with anxiety right now? Struggling with stresses of life. Amen. Not only can't sleep but can't function in the daytime because of anxiety. Hallelujah. When you have anxiety, it's because you're not resting in the peace of God. You hadn't prayed about it. You hadn't set your mind on Yahweh. You understand what I'm saying? So I want to give you a prescription right here. Philippians 4, 6. Take two verses, 6 and 7, and call me in the morning. Listen now. All right. He says, be careful. That means be anxious for what? For nothing. No thing. Nothing should make you anxious. You should be getting an anxiety attack about nothing, all right? Why? But in everything. By what? By prayer and supplication. Put a prayer on it. Put a prayer on it. Don't put an ambient on it. Put a prayer on it. Don't put a prescription pill on it. Put a prayer. Don't put a bottle on it. Put a prayer on it. Don't put a drug. Or, uh, put a prayer on it. He says, prayer and supplication, watch this, with thanksgiving. Because after I pray about it, I'm going to celebrate it, I'm going to praise him, because I know I got my request that I done made. Oh, God, I'm going to just start dancing up and down. They're going to run in the room, Kim saying, oh, he's having a panic attack. No, I'm having a praise party. I'm, it ain't panic, it's praise. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He said, prayer with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto who? Unto God, not the saints, unto God. And when you pray with thanksgiving unto God, watch this, and the peace of God. Which what? Pass it. Oh, They're not going to be able to understand it. Them guards couldn't understand why Peter was sleeping like that. Peter was sleeping so good. You know when somebody's sleeping on the side of you, they're sleeping good? What did it make you want to do? You start, <gasps> you get tired too. We call that around the house the sleep spirit. Oh, get that sleep spirit away from me. I got... You see? That pass it all understanding shall keep guard. What does it guard? Your heart and what else? And your mind. Because that's what that need, that's what need to be guarded when the devil messing with you. Peace guards what? Your heart and your mind. All right? All right? All right? Through Christ Jesus. So Peter was chilling, y'all. Peter was sleeping. Why? Because he had the peace of God. His mind was not on him. His mind was on God. He wasn't worried about his problems. He had already prayed about his problems. Peter was sleeping like a baby. Come on, give y'all some glory. Amen. <laughs> How was Peter sleeping so well? We just couldn't pass it up. Number three, his soul was anchored in the promises of God. His soul was anchored in the promises of God. You want to get you some good sleep? Amen. Hallelujah, not only put a prayer on it, but get your word on it. Yeah. Whatever you're worried about, get your word. Come on, tell your neighbor, get your word. Get your you got to get your word on that problem. You got to look through that Bible, get on Google. You got to search them scriptures, amen. You got to get you a word about what you're going through. Whatever you're worried about, you got to get you a word. Amen, it's a blessing of a thing. Amen, it's a blessing of a thing. You see, Peter had a word, amen, from Jesus about when he would die. Amen. When Brian preached this back in October last year, amen, it was one of the revelations that I love. I was sitting in there, amen, and, and he dropped that revelation. You see, Peter knew when he would die because Jesus had already promised him something about his death. Anybody hear me up in here? In John 21, verse 18, amen, in the NLT, I'm going to just have it for you. In the NLT, look what it says. Jesus talking to Peter. He says, I tell you the truth, Peter, when you were young, you were able to do as you like. 
you dress yourself and went whenever you wanted to go. But when you are old, watch this, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. In verse 19, Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. You see, Jesus was talking about how Peter was going to die. He said, you're going to stretch out your hands. And, and, and church history tells us Peter was crucified. You understand what I'm saying? Well, listen, Peter knew that he wasn't going to die in that cell because Herod wasn't crucifying him. Herod was killing him with the sword. <laughs> Peter said, I'm going to die, but I'm not going to die tomorrow because he told me I was going to stretch out my hands when I was going to die. So I'm going to die, but tomorrow is not the day. Anybody hear me up in here? Secondly, Peter, Peter, Jesus not only told Peter how he would die, he told him when he would die. He told Peter, amen, when you're old. Hey, God, when you're old, it's going to happen. Peter's sitting there thinking about that. He said, well, I'm not that old yet. I'm not old yet. Hallelujah, he was relatively young. He said, I'm not old yet. And so I'm going to die when I'm old, but tomorrow is not that day. Hey, God, hallelujah. And so I know I'm scheduled to die. Hey, God. But I believe the promise of God instead of the schedule of men. Yet his, who, all of his promises are yes and amen. Let God be true in what? In every man a lie. I don't care what was on Herod's schedule. Peter was on God's time schedule. Anybody hear me up in here? Peter had a promise. And he rested in the promise. You see, that's why Peter was sleeping. He said, oh, now I'm going to go ahead and give me some rest. He said, I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know, hey amen, when it's going to happen. But I got a promise. And though the vision tarry, wait for it. For it shall surely come to pass. Anybody hear me up in here? You see, you could stay up and worry about the bills if you want. You could stay up and worry about the car note. You can stay up and worry about, amen, hallelujah, the house note. You can worry about your rent. You can worry about that sickness that that doctor so say diagnosed you, amen. You can worry about the children if you want. You can stay up and worry about that if you want. See, me and Peter, we rather rest in the promise. Anybody hear me up in here? I just find me a promise. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Night, night. He said, me and all my house going to be saved. Night, night. If I train up a child in the way they should go, when they get old, they shall not depart. Night, night. He said, healing is the children's bread. What I said? Night, night. If I ask anything, Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, believe and I shall have received, have the things I pray for. Would you tell the devil? Night, night. Hey! <laughs> I ain't worried about a thing. I ain't worried about a thing. When them haters and the enemy surround you, hey, God, when the enemy come in like a flood, the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. What I say? Night, night. I'm going to bed because I'm resting in his promise. Come on, give y'all some glory, amen. How was Peter able to sleep like that, y'all? Huh? He was saved, man. He was resting in the peace of God. And he was resting in the promises of God. And you could walk around the same way every day. People see you the same every day. You don't have no big ebbs and flows, no, no high crests and some low valleys in your life. Hallelujah, like you're bipolar or something. You ain't got to have all of that. You can just rest in the promise. You like, you just, you chill. You like, you the same every day. You know what I'm saying? Kawhi Leonard don't eat, a good play happened Kawhi like that. A bad play happened Kawhi like that. 
That's how you're going to be in life. You're just smooth sailing. You're just, just smooth sailing. Because you're resting in the promises of God. Come on, give y'all some glory. <laughs> Psalm 119.65. Watch this. This is one that you want to write down. Put on your refrigerator. Put on your wall. It a great peace have they which love thy law. When you love the word of God, when you hang on his word and his promises, hey God, and you treat him, ah, God, as more valuable, more priceless than gold, sweeter than honey from the honeycomb. Anybody hear me? When you love that word like that, hey God, a result, a byproduct of you loving the word is going to be peace in your mind, your heart, and in your home. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's all about the word. And it don't matter what you go through. Amen. You'll be able to sleep through it. Listen, anything inconsistent with what God has promised you is not real. That's how I live my life. Anything inconsistent with what God has promised me is not real. You see? Because it's his promise that's the reality in my life. All right? So I'm going to treat this other stuff like fog. I'm going to press right through it. Sickness, I'm going to press right through it. Brokenness, I'm going to press right through it. Laid off, I'm going to press right through it. No job, I'm going to press right through it. These things are just tests. To test how much you believe the promise. You see, no matter what you're going through, the promise still stands. But God just want to see how much you believe the promise. Anybody hear me up in here? So you got to keep pressing. You got to keep going. It's, 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 it's only a test. Like when we used to watch TV, boop, it's only a test. Don't get excited. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. It's only a test. You see? You see? Anything inconsistent with his word is not real, it's fake, it's temporary, it's not permanent. Amen. For the heaven and the earth shall pass away, but his word shall endure forever. Woo! Last point, then we're going to get out of here, last point. Peter could rest. He could sleep, y'all. He was saved. He was resting in the peace of God. He was resting in the promises of God. But guess what else? His soul was at rest because he was experienced in the trials of life. He was experienced in the trials of life. And this is important, y'all. Remember, this was the third time that Peter was locked up. In Acts 4, 3, he was locked up and God delivered him. And Acts 5, 18, he was locked up and God delivered him again. And so Peter is locked up again in Acts 12. But Peter could sleep because every time before this time, Peter was locked up, God came through and got him out. Anybody hear me up in here? So Peter saw the pattern, locked up, deliverance. Locked up, deliverance. Locked up deliverance. Sick, healed. Sick, healed. Sick, healed. Broke, provision. Broke, provision. Say it with me. Broke, provision. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right? Hey, God. And he just do stuff like that. I'm in a bind. Miracle. In a bind. Miracle. Hey, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm closed in, way maker. I'm closed in, way maker. Hallelujah. That's why we call him way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark. My God, that is who you Why are you worried about something God has already brought you through? See, my dog Barack ain't worried. He know that there's a time I feed him every day. 
He get hungry, I feed him. He get hungry, I feed him. And he get hungry, I feed him. There's a pattern that even my canine has come to understand. That I am in relationship with him. And I'm not going to leave him hungry. I don't care if I go out there and I don't, he don't have no food. I'm going to get in my car and drive on down there and pick him up some food because I love him. And if I love my dog, oh, God have mercy, how much more the father loves you. Woo! And if my dog can see a pattern, hungry, feed, hungry, feed. Why you can't see the pattern of the most high God? You understand what I'm saying? Why is this thing keeping you up when he done got you this far for so long? We well, done showed up every single time for you. The experience of life, the trials that you done been through should testify of the resume, of the trustworthiness, of the veracity of your God. Why? Or you worried, oh ye of little faith. And we get like that sometimes. Even the disciples, y'all, was like this. They was worried about what they was going to eat when he had just fed 5,000. Now he took a few loaves and bread and he fed 5,000 people. That would be like me taking one sandwich up in here. And we all hungry. And I tell y'all, look, y'all, we go all eating. Pastor, what kind of sandwich it is? Let's just say it's a grilled cheese sandwich. If I, if I broke out one grilled cheese, Monique, do you see me up in here? Do you see the grilled cheese? Come on with your eyes of faith. Billy Clay, can you see the cut diagonal in the grilled cheese? All right? Now, I just think we all hungry in here. All right? And I took one grilled cheese, and I said, we all going to eat off this grilled cheese. And we all going to get full. And after I break that grilled cheese up, between all of us in here, I called the ushers to come with their baskets and pick up 12 baskets of fragments of grilled cheese. That was the miracle that happened when he fed the fire. Are you seeing it right now? So this had just happened, my issue. Watch this. This had just happened. And Jesus told them something. We're going to read it. Jesus told them, he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. That's what he told them. And all of a sudden, their mind went to sandwiches and food. They say, oh, we forgot to bring lunch. We didn't pack the necessary uh, 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 food for the day's journey. Watch this. Come on. The Bible going to tell it better than I can. Matthew 16, 6, then Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. We, we didn't bring lunch. He's mad at us. Which when Jesus perceived, he didn't tell him. He, they didn't tell him. He just discerned it. <laughs> he saw it on their foreheads. They were tripping. He, said, he discerned. He said, they're tripping. So when he perceived, he said unto them, watch this. O oh, ye of little faith. See, because I done did something in the past. <laughs> that even if you had this problem in the present, my record with you in the past should tell you that this is not a problem that you should be worried about in the present because of my power that you've seen in the past. He said, O oh, ye of little faith. Why reason ye among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand who you're dealing with? Neither remember the five loaves who, and the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? Why are you talking to me about food? Neither the seven loaves and the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up? Why are you worrying about this problem when I've shown you that I can fix this thing time and time again? This morning, God wants to talk to you this morning. Not Philadelphia, but you individually. 
Why are you worried about this thing that you worried about this morning? Did not he get you through this same problem previously? Did not he get you through last summer? Did not he get you through the last time you lost a job? Did not he get you through the last light bill, the last car note, the last mortgage? Did not he? <laughs> Didn't he heal your body before? You're going to make me lose my voice up in here. Oh, ye of little faith. What you worried about this morning? Go to bed tonight. Go to bed tonight. You could slumber and sleep because your problems is in the hands of the one who neither sleeps nor slumbers. Hey! Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, get some rest. Tell your other neighbor, because God got it. We winding down, we winding down, we winding down. See, when you've been through this before and he come through, hallelujah, it should give you rest. Romans 5, 3 is one of my favorite ones, and it's the last one we're going to talk about. It teaches us that problems in the believer's life should build us up and not break us down. The problems we go through, amen, Taylor, they, they make us better, amen. It's like on that wrestling match. Every, every round we lose don't make us a worse wrestler, make us a better one. Because we learn some things from it. Oh, that's how you escape that. Oh, that's how you do that. Oh, this is what happened when I put his leg behind his neck. Yes. <laughs> you see? Watch this. And so the problems in life for you. Don't let them get you down. Don't let them break you. They're supposed to build you. Romans 5, 3 says, we glory in tribulation. We glory in trouble. It might not feel good. It might not look good. But we give God the glory for it because we know that all things work together for our good. We know that God's going to make us better through this thing. We glory in it. All right? We glory in tribulation. Why? knowing we know something we don't think it's not a hypothesis we know something about tribulation that tribulation work it patience it gives us endurance meaning that it allows us to continue longer for God hey God so when I, I get in this trouble the next time I'm not gonna break down I'll be able to go longer before I get worried because I I know he can make me through Tribulation work in patience. And patience, experience. All right? And people with experience, that's why when you go to a job, we, we want five years, what? Because when you have experience, hey, God, when things hit you, you ain't worried about it. You go to sleep because you didn't experience that before. Trial's supposed to build some things on you. Patience, experience, and experience work at what? Hope. All right? Listen, if he did it before, He'll do it again. All right? All right? All right? So I'm hopeful. You see, that's why Peter could sleep, y'all. You see? He was saved. He was resting in the peace of God. He was resting in the promises of God. You see? And lastly, he had been through some things already. In the trials of life that God showed up and showed out on his behalf. What you worried about this morning? You see? Ushers, come and open up the gates. We're going to have a little altar call. Amen? And at this moment, amen, we're going to call for a few groups of people. Some kind of way this message spoke to you. Some kind of way, amen, God knew that your sleep wasn't as sweet as it could be. Some kind of way God interrupted my regular sermon schedule to talk to you about something that's bothering you that shouldn't be bothering you at all. For he give it his beloved sleep. Whatever that may be, amen, we're going to have a little time of prayer up here. All right? 
And in one of those areas that I talked about, amen, your faith might be wavering. And we're going to fix it this morning. Maybe it's going to be you looking at God's past accomplishments in your life, and that's going to give you the faith. You're going to go back and, and look at your, at your Ebenezer stones and remember what he's done for you in the past. For others, amen, it might be, hey, God, you're going to have to get your word and rest in the promise. Hey, God. For others, amen, you're just going to have to pray about it and put your mind back on God and rest in the peace that Christ gives us. But for some, but for some this morning, your answer before all these other things is to get your soul right with God, to be saved this morning. Because that's the linchpin. That's, that's, that's the thing that connects all of these other benefits. If you're not saved, then the rest of the sermon don't apply to you. You got to get the first thing first right. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Then all these other things going to be added to you. All right? All right? So, okay. We're going to have all to call. So we're going to have the saved and we're going to have some that's coming to be saved. By the time it's over, we're not going to be worried about a thing. You might fall asleep on the way home. You might be getting sleepy right now. Hey, God. Hallelujah, you got somebody, hallelujah, somebody sleeping, Monique. Baby girl sleeping already? No, she's not sleeping. She's she been sleeping? That's that anointing. That's the anointing. The anointing is here. The presence is here. So without further ado, amen, the altar is open. Come, come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. So worry and stress can just fall off you. Hallelujah. It can just fall off you. We're going to let God worry about that. Ha! He's never failed us yet. He's never failed us yet. Yes. Great is your faithfulness. Perfect. Faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. I'm still in your hands. Thank you. This is my promise. My confidence. You, you never fail me. Ooh. Your promise still stands. Just keep singing, B. Great is your faithfulness. No matter if I talk, just keep going, just keep going. There's anointing on that, there's anointing on that, there's anointing on that. I know who I believe, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him. You've never, Antonio, he's never failed us. And he never will. <laughs> he never will. so faithful I'm still in your hands. hey this is my confidence, is my confidence. hey come on give y'all some glory hey you've never And I done had some close ones, Mark. Hallelujah. But I'm here to testify. You've never, not a single time, not a single time. Hallelujah. Didn't know how I was going to get out. Didn't know how we was going to pay for it. Didn't know how it was going to be healed. Hallelujah. But you never, you never, you never. I got the scars to prove it. Hey, but you, hey, you never did it. You never failed me. You never failed me. You never failed me. You, you never failed me. You never. Hey, might not have came when I wanted, but you was always, always there on time. I, I thank you. 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 You don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know who you're dealing with. He been doing this. Hallelujah. For a long time, you don't know who you're dealing with. He, 
Abraham found them trustworthy. And Isaac found them trustworthy. And Jacob found them trustworthy. And David found them trustworthy. And Hezekiah found them trustworthy. And Jehoshaphat found them trustworthy. And Paul found them trustworthy. And Peter found them trustworthy. And Billy Graham found them trustworthy. And Tony Evans found them trustworthy. And Jake's found him trustworthy and Pastor Omar found him trustworthy and Lil Omar found him trustworthy and he's trustworthy 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 just just look at his resume just look at his credentials never fail never fail never fail Forever faithful. Forever faithful. Forever faithful. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. Woo! 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 The spirit is here, boy. Just the presence is here. Just my God, my God, the presence is here. To move with your heart. <laughs> you move a mountain. Never fail, yeah. Oh, never fail, yeah. I believe you fail, yeah. Because you never fail, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Never fail, Jesus. Say, oh, faithful God. You can do anything. But fail. I thank you that you've never failed me yet. I stand on your promise. All of them that you love me. I've seen you move. I'm just asking that you'll do it again. First off, First off, save my soul. Save my soul. Based, on your promise, Based on your promise, you said if I ask, said, if I ask that I would receive. That if I knock, that it would be open. That if I seek, that I would find. That I would find. That's, your promise. That's your promise. Well, I'm asking, well, I'm, asking. I'm, seeking. I'm seeking, I'm knocking. I'm knocking. Open Lord the doors of salvation and save my soul. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Help me to sleep tonight, knowing that my soul is in your hands. Save me. I believe you died. You were buried, and you rose again. Not only save me, but bless me. I have the Son. Now give me everything that comes with the Son. Give me the peace. Give me the joy. Give me the provision, the healing, the abundant life. I'm ready for all my blessings. Say, I'm ready for all my blessings. Say, I'm ready for all my blessings. saying one more time, one more time. Somebody not convinced yet. Somebody say, I'm ready for all my blessings. You promised them and I'm ready to receive them. I know you can't lie. 
So give them up, Daddy. Give them up, Daddy. Give them up, Daddy. I receive them. In Jesus' name. That's good, that's good. Lord, I'm ready. Oh, a new song, come on. I'm ready. Woo! Lord, I'm ready for all my blessings. Oh, that's good, that's good. Lord, I'm ready. Woo! I'm ready. Woo! Lord, I'm ready for all Listen, listen, here we go. Lift your hands up right now. Right now. Right now. So God, your people have asked and received all your promises. So now I pray that the peace of God that passeth all understanding descend upon them now. Right now, we rebuke every spirit of worry, every spirit of insomnia, Every anxiety spirit right now, we rebuke it off for your people. And right now, we stand on your promise that you give your beloved sleep and rest. They not worry because they know that you got it all under control. God, we leave the bills at the altar. We leave that sickness at the altar. We leave them children at the altar. And we're not going to pick them back up. When we leave this place, God, we're going to put it in your hand. You say, cast your care on you because you care for us. So now, God, bless your people with peace right now. And take them to the next level, Daddy. Take them to the next level, God. As they trust you, Take them to the next level. They don't pass the test right now. They don't pass the test. They won't be worried about the same old thing like they used to worry. They're ready. They're ready. He keep bringing you to the same spot because you keep failing the same test. But you're ready. I think you're ready. You ready? For all of your blessings. Come on, give y'all some glory in this house. I'm ready for all, all my blessings. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. Woo! And bless you with shalom peace. With shalom peace. You ready now? I think you're ready. I think you're ready. I think you're ready. I'm ready. Come on, tell him that you're ready. Come on, shout that you're ready. Hey! Woo. For all of it, I don't want to see.